Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Good evening. It's um, the 11th of March, and I apologize. I'm a little bit late tonight. Uh, I got uh, sidetracked a little bit, so my apologies for that. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, appreciate everyone that's uh, with us tonight. Um, I might mention that we got a little bit better report today from Brother and Sister Fisher's little baby. And uh, so we're all still praying for her that uh, if she can tolerate getting off of uh, <clears throat> oxygen, uh, they won't have to move her to Children's Hospital. So. Uh, they're reducing, I uh, believe that Brother Fisher told me, a, a half a liter every day, and she is tolerating that. And I think they're down to two liters or maybe two and a half liters a day. So they have like four or five days to get her completely off of it, and she won't have to transfer to, um, if, uh, if she's able to continue to tolerate. So let's all continue praying for her, I'm sure. Most everyone is aware of their condition. And then uh, Brother uh, Ray Weaver, uh, many of you know that his house did have a fire in his house. It didn't necessarily destroy the whole house, but it did destroy a bedroom and a bathroom and a hallway. And, and uh, he's been in the hospital while that took place. And uh, then in the rehab center, and uh, so we need to certainly keep praying for Brother and Sister uh, Weaver, Ray and Susan Weaver. Anyway, I just wanted to, to mention those things uh, here tonight. And uh, I wanted to uh, welcome everyone to our Bible study live broadcast. Um, I'm still having a little trouble with my sinus and allergies this time of year. It's always this way, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to do better on <clears throat> controlling, you know, it, especially when I'm on live broadcast, and I just apologize for any uh, inconvenience that it may bring uh, to different ones. But anyway, I thought I might mention tonight uh, a little bit about our Bible reading. I'm certainly encouraging everyone that I can to read your Bible, especially husbands and wives, to read it together and read it in, if you, if you can, in chronological order. If you have the, um, you know, if you have an app, I'm, I am, I uh, am, recommending the Olive Tree Bible app. It's a free app on your phone, whether it's uh, either on Apple or Android, they're both the same, or it's even on also uh, Microsoft on your computer. I'm sure it's on Mac. And so you can uh, download it. It does uh, cross sync across all platforms of and your, in your devices. In other words, like for example, I right now I'm talking to you on my Microsoft computer PC, and uh, I have my I have half of my screen um, that I'm looking at this live stream broadcast video of myself, and then the other half of my screen is my Bible Tree uh, Bible app. Uh, that app does have, uh, I, I, if you get that app, I certainly recommend um, the Strong's a Concordance to go with it because you can click on any word that you're reading in or touch it on your phone and it'll come up with either the Hebrew or Greek, um, um, the um, Brother Ray Weaver's calling me right now. Let me set my phone where it won't ring. Um, and so, uh, there. 
Um, <clears throat> um, anyway, so that uh, it'll come up with a dictionary and show you exactly what that word means in either Hebrew or Greek as it was written. Uh, I highly recommend that. That costs $19.99. It's a one-time charge. It's always with you. You always have it <clears throat> included in your app. However, I believe Brother Painter probably added to our website. Uh, if you go to olivetree.com, uh, they have a um, Bible study essentials that you can buy for the same price, but it has a lot more uh, app en enhancements besides just the uh, Strong's Concordance. Anyway, I'm recommending that Bible app because I've tried many and it's the best app I've found. It's more, it's very user friendly and uh, it has a lot of modules that you can go to on their, what they call their resource guide, which is free. It has some free dictionaries, some free commentaries, um, like Matthew Henry's um, concise commentary. It's got Jameson's, I believe, uh, and uh, some others. Um, uh, my Bible is a Ryrie Study Bible, and there is a Ryrie Study Bible uh, notes on there. And so there's there's many things. There's there's maps. There's uh, different Bibles that you can get. Some of them are free and some of them you would have to pay for. Anyway, I recommend that app. Trust me, they don't give me a penny for recommending it, but and in fact, they don't know I'm recommending it, but I do recommend that app, especially the local people here because I can send them my notes. Uh, if I'm teaching something, you know, we're studying on something, well, I can send them my notes and uh, they can have that benefit if, if we all do that. And I'm going to mention here to the local people that um, if everyone in our local assembly would download the WhatsApp app, uh, we could communicate with each other on, on a WhatsApp group. We could develop a group on that app. I know <clears throat> you can also have a group on Facebook, but <clears throat> excuse me, um, well, on the WhatsApp app, you know, we can, it, it's a texting app. It is uh, encrypted um, for those that are on WhatsApp. And uh, <clears throat> so I think it's safe. We, all of our, all of the Dominican people use WhatsApp. I think most of the people in Mexico do. And uh, you, you know, you can call overseas for free on it. You can receive calls for free on it. Um <clears throat> Of course, it does operate with, uh, it, it'll operate on cell tower R, um, which works fine if you got unlimited data, but, but if you have, um, if it is a limit to it, then you'd have to be careful with it. But of course, it also works on Wi-Fi. <clears throat> anyway, uh, if all of our local people had WhatsApp, we could certainly uh, put everybody in our local assembly on a group. And we could, anything that needs to be done, like if we cancel a service or we're having a work day, we can put that on there. Everyone would be notified on WhatsApp where not everyone follows Facebook, for example. So right now we have, uh, we have a, a group for our dining, our kitchen, the kitchen uh, group, uh, workers in our kitchen has, has a uh, Facebook group page that they notify one another by <clears throat> but I think it would might be more advantageous to have a whatsapp that we would all be on a group and that we, all notifications would come through that we, we could continue with the, uh, the Facebook uh, kitchen uh, group if we wanted to that's not a problem anyway it's just a suggestion uh, something I think we we may want to do uh, and so if you want to download that WhatsApp, you'll be ahead of the game when we start it. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, I, in, in our Bible reading, 
<clears throat> if you are reading um, the chronological Bible, you're right now in Deuteronomy. If you're following, if you're just following everything, uh, I, my wife and I are reading it, but we're we're a little bit ahead. I I I just I you know I just find it's very minute just to read three or four chapters a day. So we'll generally read maybe twice that. We've generally read two days at a time. And in doing that, what happens is you'll have days where things will happen where you can't read. We generally don't read on Sundays. You know, we're pretty tied up with church all day. And, and Saturdays, a lot of times we're tied up. Like this Saturday, we have a, a minister's Zoom meeting body-wide for all the pastors. And that's a uh, four-hour meeting. And so sometimes you, you know, you have so much going on that you don't get to read. So we read two days at a time. And then when we miss days, we don't get behind. And um, so I think we're probably 10 or 12 days ahead of our Bible reading right now. <clears throat> and uh, today's reading was uh, the book of Joshua. And we read the first eight chapters of the book of Joshua. And uh, we're really enjoying uh, the going through the Old Testament together and discussing it. And uh, I was mentioning to my wife, I just thought I might just relate maybe a little bit of this, that when uh, Moses, you know, before he passed away, uh, before God had him go up on the mountain and look over into the promised land and, and he took him there, he wasn't, he was very, uh, there wasn't anything wrong with him. He was very uh, vibrant. Uh, he was in good health, so to speak. He was 120 years old, I believe. And uh, But God sent him up on that mountain and took him and, and he went to be with his fathers, uh, waiting, no doubt, for the resurrection. And of course, he passed his torch on to Joshua. The Lord uh, had him do that. And uh, anyway, so we started out in the, the book of Joshua today and, and uh, we read how, you know, I, I think it's the, the types in the Bible are so interesting to me and how that uh, Joshua sent, uh, he sent two spies over into uh, uh, let's see, where did he go first? Uh, I don't know why the, the, the city is escaping me right now. Uh, let me, let me get it for you. Uh, I don't know why, uh, Jericho. I don't know why I couldn't come up with that, but anyway, sometimes, when you get a little older, you'll understand that sometimes words just escape you, you know. Next time, you know, it'll come to you like that, but other times it just escapes you premature, uh, just, you know, without even any uh, understanding why. And then then next time, you, you'd never forget it, but it just works that way. Sometimes you just have a what they call a senior moment. Anyway, uh, when they when when he sent these spies over, uh, they came. They went to a harlot's house named Rahab. And uh, if you remember, the king of Jericho heard that those men had came into the country, and he sent and and where they had went to Rahab's house, and so he sent to them, to her, to find out where are these men fetch me these men, and she shielded these guys and she said look they came but but I don't know where they went but they went toward Jordan so if you hurry you might catch them so they headed in that direction and she had hid these two men up on her roof on top you know uh, the way I have it, it pictured in my mind is their the roof of their houses was flat it's that way in the Dominican Republic right now. I mean, people have, they have a house and then on top of the roof is flat 
and that's like a big patio. Uh, and uh, I, that's what I picture in my mind the way it was. I remember when Peter was up on top of the roof and before God sent him to Cornelius' house and he had that vision of that big sheet coming down with the unclean animals that God told him to rise and eat. Uh, that's the way houses were back then. Men in the Dominican Republic, a lot of times I've went to visit men and pastors there and they'd be up on top of the roof praying. Their wives would say, he's up there. He's up there praying. And I'd go up, I'd, I'd go up on the roof. They, I mean, they'd have a, a stairs up to it. I'd go up on the roof and visit with them up there. They'd have a chair or two up there where they went up there and prayed and read their Bible, what have you. Anyway, she had hid these men on her roof and she had hid them in, um, uh, among flax that she had evidently stacked up there. And she had them hid in that in case they searched her house, but they didn't. And she went up there and, and uh, she had told them, she said, look, we've heard about you people. We've heard about how you were, uh, how you came out of Egypt, <clears throat> what you did, how you came through the land, how God has been with you, the God of uh, heaven. And our heart is faint, became faint when we heard about y'all. We knew y'all were going to come and take our land. And uh, she said, so when y'all come to do that with you, I'm asking you to remember me and uh, make sure that you know, that you protect me, my household. And those two men said, we, look, if you'll take a scarlet thread and put it in your window. She let them out of her window by uh, a cord. And, uh, you know, evidently it may have been a scarlet color, but they said, look, if you'll take a scarlet thread, they remembered that. If you'll put that in your window, when we see that, we will not destroy anybody in, in your house where there's a scarlet thread through the window. But she lived uh, on the town wall uh, and lived up, up high. And uh, so they made a covenant with her. They said, we'll see to it. And, but they said, but if you tell about us, if you, if you reveal all of this, then we're not gonna be responsible to hold this covenant that we're making with you. But, uh, I was telling my wife, I said, you know, there should, we might ought to consider this. Number one, when, uh, when Joshua took the children, of, the men of God, and those that were 20 years old and upward in his army and took them across Jordan, they had to follow, I think it was 2,000, uh, cubits behind the ark. First, the priesthood was to carry the ark out into Jordan and stand in Jordan. And the waters would roll back on a heap and they would all cross over on dry shod ground. And then the ark would cross over and when they came out, then the waters would, would come back together. And God told Joshua, he said, I'm gonna, rem I'm gonna make you like Moses today, the people will see that my hand's on you like it was upon Moses today when I do this. Of course, they crossed over and it was during the time of harvest. It's one of the things that you need to realize is, is that uh, most of the time that uh, things like this took place in the Bible, it was during a time of harvest. That's important to understand because um, that's that a har that harvest is when all of the snow melted up in the mountains, ran down in the streams, and they all ran down into Jordan and Jordan overflowed her banks. And that's a picture. It's a picture of all religion coming together. And uh, that's going to happen in the end of this world. You'll see a beast system arise and that... Uh, a religion out here, uh, what we know as Babylon in the Bible, will all join together. Isaiah 4 said, in that day, seven women will take a hold of one man. 
saying, let us wear our own apparel. Uh, let us uh, eat our own bread. And uh, uh, so, <clears throat> uh, but be called by your name. So to take away our reproach. We've always taught that as seven women being the, the religious world of Christianity taking hold of the beasts, the beast system, and the man of sin, <clears throat> and coming back together instead of the division of Protestantism, Pentecostalism, and all, that uh, they'll come back together in one system, It'll, taking the mark of the beast, and uh, they'll come together, they'll take a hold of one man, and they will, but they will say, let us keep our own covering. Let us have all of our different organizations, organizational coverings. Let us wear our own apparel and eat our own um, uh, bread. Uh, that is our own doctrine. And that will be a compromise that, you know, when uh, uh, that'll be a compromise in Christianity, but it even took place among the among Mohammedism, when Muhammad uh, began to uh, have uh, the Crusades against Catholicism, they'd go into a city, and they would they would uh, uh, compromise. They would let the Christian churches. They'd say, "We, you know, that's uh, uh, after uh, Muhammad died, they'd go into a city and the the caliph." Would say we we won't bring a Mus we won't bring Muslims into y'all's church or into your assembly. We'll let you have your assembly, and they'd compromise with them. And they found that 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 the people were would welcome them in because of that, because of the compromise. Well, there'll be a compromise among Christianity receiving the uh, the beast and the mark of the beast. And they'll all come together saying this is the body coming together. That's how they'll present that. It'll deceive many in those days. That's going to be during a time when God is going to harvest the end of the Gentile world in a restored church. That's a picture. We've been through the wilderness. We've, we've come through the wilderness. And, and when we go in, when God restores the church, we will cross Jordan in a type. We'll cross Jordan. And of course, here's another type. After they crossed Jordan, God had Joshua to circumcise all the men, for none of them were circumcised. Because uh, God had them circumcised when they came out of Egypt. But all of those men disobeyed God and um, they weren't they weren't circumcised. I mean, they were circumcised, but they had to stay in the wilderness 40 years because none of them were able to go in because of their uh, evil report after Caleb and Joshua and the other 10 men came out. Those 10 men had an evil report and turned the people against God's uh, telling them to go in. And they would, the people resisted God and Moses and therefore... Uh, God said, I'm going to let them, uh, not one of them people's going into the promised land. And they didn't circumcise anybody after that. So those that went in were the younger generation. I think you need to look at the picture of that, that none of us, prob none of us have had our hearts completely circumcised. But when we cross over Jordan, when we enter into a promised land, we will God, the glory of God will be so strong. The power of God will be so great that it will cause us to circumcise our hearts and uh, for our hearts to be fully yielded and dedicated to God, not bringing forth our seed, our, our own will at all. That's a picture for us. And then... Uh, another picture there is, is when they did go in, the first city they went in against was Jericho. 
And God said, take the men that bear the ark, the priesthood, and have give them seven men and seven trumpets. And when they circle the city, have them blow those seven trumpets. There's a picture. That when we go across, when the church is restored, that's a time of the seventh trumpet, trumpet of the prophecy of the book of Revelation. If you remember, there were seven trumpets. And the seventh trumpet is the last prophetical hour and the last trumpet. And uh, Paul mentioned it in Second Thessalonians when he said, or uh, I'm sorry, First Thessalonians 4, when he talked about the Lord coming, that when he said at the last trump, that his coming is going to be in the restored trump, uh, I'm sorry, the restored church in the last trumpet which is the seventh trumpet. And so there's beautiful pictures here that helps us see. And then I would consider this harlot that received these men that went into Jericho to spy out the land, that they made a covenant with her to put a scarlet thread around her window. I would... I would say we ought to consider that that represents the people of God that will receive those that are in Babylon, the harlot. See, the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation talks about the harlot and her daughters. That has to do with all of Babylon, the daughters of the harlot. That's the system that's out there among confused Christianity that will make up the beast system. And so he was telling her, this harlot, that's a picture of those who would receive those of, of God's people in the body of Christ in the restored church that, you know, here, here's what they did. When they went into Jericho, they, they blew those seven trumpets. They never fought. On the seventh day, they went around it seven times blew the seven trumpets and Moses and Joshua said, shout. And they all shouted and the walls fell down. They took the city and they destroyed everyone, man, woman, child with a sword. And that's a picture when the church is restored, the sword of the word of God will destroy all of Babylonian ways as God has us begin to take the people of Babylon and get them out of Babylon and destroy all the falsehoods that's been planted in their hearts. Uh, the city was burned. In other words, that's judgment. And, uh, but that's going to take place at the seventh trumpet, this harvest uh, time at the end of the Gentile world. And of course, uh, if you remember, he went into uh Joshua took the people after that into Ai. He just sent 3,000 people, 3,000 men up there. And they, I think they killed 30, Ai killed 36 of them and, and, and chased them out of the land and defeated them. And it's Joshua fell on his face, and called the elders together, fell before the Ark of the Covenant and began to ask God, why have you done this? What, you know, all the people are going to hear this. They're going to, People are no longer going to be afraid of us. And God began to speak to him. He said, there, there's an abomination. Uh, the evil thing has taken place. And of course, what he was talking about was uh, uh, what was his name? Achid? Uh, let me get his name for you here. Um Oh, let me look. <laughs> I don't know why that name has slipped my mind. And they go into AI, what is that, like the sixth or seventh chapter? Yes, okay. Here we go. Achan, 
Yes, I'm right. It was Achan. Uh, and, and, you know, so God answered Joshua in his prayer and he said, look, he said, um, uh, evil has been done. And, and of course, he said, I want you to take every, tri every tribe and I'm going to choose a tribe. Achan was out of the tribe of Judah. And he said, then I'm going to take a family out of that tribe. Uh, and then I'm going to take a man out of that family. And of course, the lot fell on, on uh, Achan. And, and Joshua said, what have you done? And uh, God told him, he said, I want you to, you know, when you find this man, I want you to burn, I want you to kill him and burn him and everything he's got. And what he had done when he asked, uh, he said, I saw in the spoils when we spoiled Jericho and I took the Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels, and I coveted them, and he took them. And that's a picture. That's a picture that when the church is restored, there will be even people that will take on a Babylonian covering. They may not fully uh, have a, a good vision. They may uh, take on in awe when they see the, the ways of Babylon. And then they take on that Babylonian garment and the silver. By the way, when they destroyed Jericho, they had to destroy everything except keep the gold and silver and the brass. Everything else had to be destroyed. And that's a picture that we won't do away with the word of God. When we begin to deal with Babylon, we will not do away with the, the word of God that they have are brass, it represents the outer court. What was brass in the outer court? It, that's a picture of the basics of salvation. The salvation message happened in the outer court with all the instruments out there were of brass that dealt with the flesh. Uh, but you, you got into silver and gold when you got into the, the holy place. And so of the truth of the word of God, it's not that none of the truth was out there. It was in the labor also, but it was dealt with. The flesh had to be dealt with before we could come into a restored church, which is a picture of the, of the holy place. And so, of course, uh, here I'll read it to you. Joshua sent his messengers. They ran into the tent. Behold, it was hid in his tent, silver un and the silver under it, and they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them to Joshua and under the children of Israel and laid them before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with, with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment, a Babylonian garment, the wedge of gold, and his sons. We've even talked that golden wedge, you know, is a wedge that divides God's people with false false doctrine, turning, you can take the word of God and turn it and twist it uh, and make it say what you want it to say. Uh, but they took that, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his asses, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, and they brought him into the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? And the Lord hath troubled thee this day, and all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor. Uh, uh, that word means trouble or disturbance. You've disturbed us or troubled us this day in the Valley of Achor. Anyway, that's what Achor meant. Anyway, then God told Joshua, go take Ai. And of course, they went to Ai and and uh, and, uh, and took Ai for the Lord. And of course, this is the beginning of <clears throat> the children of Israel going into the promised land, which is a picture. It's a picture of the restored church entering in, uh, uh, crossing Jordan. We'll cross Jordan down here and enter in. So I just thought I might rehearse that 
that little history. Uh, it's been taught for many years in this body, but sometimes we we don't go over these things. And um, I'm going to mention uh, to the to the local people here again. I want you to know that we are Brother Painter and I are working on this app for our phones and those of you that are feel a part of us like Sister Layton uh, and, and others that <clears throat> want it, you'll be able to download an app on your phone soon and it will, will, will try to have several things on there. Like for example, uh, uh, it'll have our, our uh, live stream. You, can live, you can look at our live stream services on your app, on your phone, on your iPad, on your uh, wherever. Um, it'll have archives. It'll have our website on it, a link to it. Uh, I think it will have a menu item on there called the pastor's desk where I will uh, give different things that I feel to give that'll be on there, links to those videos. Uh, we may even have, I'm even considering have a Bible reading uh, menu on there where I may read the Bible to you, looks like I'm reading it right now, and explain it as I go. Uh, you know, give you at least my input on it. Archives of different uh, ministers of the past that some of their great messages that we have in recording that we could put on links that you could listen to. And then, you know, if we have a special service where we feel like God met us in a great way, uh, with a great message or something, we may add that on there. So in our archive page, uh, a news page that uh, would give you any news that we're wanting to keep people up on and informed of. It'll have a, a, a giving page or donate page where you won't have to write or mail a check in. You can actually enter in on that page how you want to give. If you want to pay your tithes or offerings through that app, you can do it. You can give it uh, manually during the church service when we receive offerings and tithes. Are uh, you can you can give missionary offerings this way, so it'll be available to you. Um, a place that says uh, a menu, the item that says "Find Us." If you click on it, it'll give you a map. It'll take you to your maps, and and give you directions exactly how to find the church. Um, and so, uh, uh, Anyway, our, our website, of course, would be on there too, a, a link to it. Anyway, we're looking at different things. We're working on it right now, and we'll have it to you. Hopefully, we'll have it to you in just a, uh, in weeks, not months, and just, you know, we'll try to get it done. I don't know exactly how long it'll take them. We will have a app on the Android uh, Play Store. I don't know yet exactly what we're going to name it if it's going to be First Gospel Live, uh, Church Live or what, but, and it'll also be on the Apple Store where you can download that and you'll have an app that will be, uh, uh, I think it will be a very big asset to us. Anyway, praise God, it's a, it's a, you know, spring's coming and that makes us all look up. We all, you know, in spring, a new, a new uh, season's coming upon us. And it's always, spring's always beautiful where flowers come out, leaves come out on trees, uh, warmth comes again with the sun. And uh, of course we get rains that blesses the earth and, and uh, everything outside. And so, uh, and then here we are uh, with these vaccines coming out, COVID is coming down. We need to still be careful with our mask and our social distancing, but many thousands of people, uh, probably in the millions now, that have taken the vaccine, at least their first one. Some of them's already finished with their second. And um, of course, they're coming out with this first, with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, where you just need one. 
I'm still not sold on the idea that it's as good a vaccine as having only 74% efficacy where Pfizer and Moderna has like 94, 95% efficacy. But I, I do understand that in remote areas where people can't maybe get back for the second shot or they don't, they, they can't even get into that area with shots where, uh, you know, the Pfizer vaccine has to be kept under very cold um, uh, freezer and the Moderna does too, but not as cold as Pfizer, but the Johnson & Johnson can just be refrigerated for a length of time that they can get it into a lot of these remote areas. And of course, uh, what they're saying about that is, is that anybody that takes the Johnson & Johnson vaccine won't, uh, they may get the virus, but they won't, they're saying it's 100% efficacy has a hundred percent efficacy against hospitalization and death. You won't die with it. If you get it, it'll be a mild case and uh, you won't even be hospitalized with it. It's what they're saying. Anyway, uh, some of this is left to be seen, but the bottom line of what I'm saying is, is it looks like that we're maybe, it looks like we're coming to the end of this pandemic and that we can get on with our lives in more of a normal way I don't think we are to discount it as though, you know, that it just happened. I certainly believe that God knew what was happening. He, he either brought it about or allowed it to happen, and he had a reason for that. And I think it that to us, it ought to be a wake-up call that we need to get as close to God as we can get serve him with diligently with our whole heart, soul, and mind, and uh, get ourselves ready to make the next step in God. Somebody that like that song says, the next, te next step we take may, may be the greatest move of all. The next voice we hear may be Jesus. And the next, uh, uh, how the next step we take may lead us into perfection. Uh, we're getting close in the end of this world for the greatest move of God the Gentile world has ever seen. And I certainly think we ought to be uh, doing what Jesus said to do, watch and pray. We're not children of the night. He's not coming to us as a thief in the night, but he's coming to us in great glory and great power. We're children of the day. Uh, Amos said, God doeth nothing, but first he showeth it to his prophets. I believe with all my heart, if you'll stay in the body of Christ, stay connected to God's ministry, God will reveal to you exactly where we're at in God's plan. Um, we, you will not be in darkness or not know what God's doing. Stay sober, watch, and pray. Keep your mind on the things of God and keep God's ministry before you so that we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. All right, God bless you. Once again, I will, uh, I'll, I want to apologize to you for being a few minutes late. Starting tonight, uh, I, I got sidetracked and, and uh, hindered me there just a little bit for about the first 10 minutes. So please forgive me for that. God bless your hearts. Have a good night. Pray for me, and I'll pray for you. And those of you who are local, I'll see you Sunday morning at 9.30, our breakfast in the dining room right before our 10 o'clock Bible study and church at 11.30. Try to invite a friend. God bless you, and good night.